Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between New Art School and Design Dutch Podcast. Our guest today is Christian Guillerin. Welcome, Christian. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very flattered to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. Wonderful. Tell us about you. Uh, my name is Christian Guillerin. I'm the director of uh, School of Design in France called uh, uh, L'Ecole de Design Nantes Atlantique. Nantes is in France, too hard train uh, from Paris in the west of France. And uh, the school I manage is uh, 1,500 students and uh, apprentis. And uh, so students who are uh, directly involved uh, with uh, companies. And uh, I've been uh, president of uh, Cumulus. Cumulus is the uh, most important um, association of universities and school of design, art and media in the world. It's based in Helsinki. I've been president uh, uh, six years and uh, I am uh, honorary president uh, of Cumulus for uh, the rest of my life, probably. So that's it. This is my, my main uh, activities, and uh, but I can talk about the, 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 the school I'm the president of in China, uh, which is the branch of L'Ecole de Design. Uh, and uh, we have all the branches in India, in Brazil, in Montreal. And we have just created um, a school in Benin, in West Africa. That's it. And you also have those particular research interests as well. Yes. Um, I'm involved in design as a strategic discipline, as design as a discipline of management, you know. I'm not a designer. Uh, I come from business, and um, but uh, I've been enrolled to uh, manage to be the director of the School of Design 20 years ago. And uh, I realized at that time that it was exactly the School of Management I would have dreamt, dreamt for me. Wow. And uh, it's a school where uh, you can uh, work with technology, with marketing, of course, because the, the, the product need, needs to, to the product need to be sold. And um, philosophy, sociology, applied art, arts, and uh, all together, and you mix that to uh, represent uh, the, the world of tomorrow and, and finally the world in which you want to live in. So it's a, a great experience, a great experience to work with the students. Um, uh, some of them are very talented and uh, I learn every morning something new and uh, a new project, new concept, uh, new ideas, uh, a new future. And that's um, really uh, ectic. That's, uh, that's very, very exciting. Yeah. So tell us tell us about the schools. Tell us about uh, more about, about you. So I've been enrolled uh, twenty years ago in an applied art school, and uh, when I arrived, uh, there have been a big shift. We decided to work with companies. We decided to apply the uh, uh, the adage of uh, Raymond Lewy: uh, the, the the best curb of a product, the best shape of a product is the shape of the cells. And uh, so, and we decided to work um, very close uh, to the companies and the, uh, to the economical area. In fact, we shift from creation to innovation. And uh, so many schools of design uh, are on this um, um, paradigm now, but uh, it was no... Uh, it was not so uh, frequent um, 20 years ago to work with companies and especially in France. And, uh, but we decided that and it worked very well because uh, um, for many uh, companies, um, innovation has become strategic. So, and uh, there is a big shift in the, uh, in, in the industrial paradigms. You know, we have, uh, uh, we are sat on the um, scientific management paradigm, which is uh, how to do better and better what we know how to do. And we have shifted to another paradigm, uh, which is uh, what I can do um, uh, otherwise or uh, 
how I can do uh, all the things or all the products or uh, to pass from product to services with what I know how to do. And uh, so this is the paradigm of innovation and design is spatially adapted for that. So this is the reason why I say that design has become strategic. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's very exciting because it also feeds into um, current challenges of apprenticeships and employability. So the, the, the aim, the philosophy of the school I manage is based on the uh, rate of uh, employment at the end of the program, definitely. And uh, whatever the talent of the students and whatever the, the quality of the final projects, you know, and uh, the rate of employment is preeminent. So, and uh, you, you can have the best uh, event exhibition of the final project. And uh, uh, if it doesn't lead you to uh, the employment of, uh, of the students, finally, uh, I mean, we don't like it. And definitely, so the philosophy is professionalization. And uh, we educate some designers to become designers, definitely. And, uh, and the thing uh, after that is probably, but uh, we, talked, uh, we talked about that already, it's um, professionalization and career. And uh, I do feel and I regret that um, uh, we never talk about the career of designer. And, uh, and especially in, in the university and in the schools. And uh, we prepare the students to become professional of design, to become designer at 25 years old, what they're gonna be at 35 or 40 or 45 years old. And this is a real problem because if we say from one part that design has become strategic, we need the designer uh, to occupy the top strategic position. And, and this is the real problem because uh, they have no projection of that, no projection of that. And, uh, and even in the companies, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, very difficult for the companies to uh, um, decide that the next uh, marketing director and will be a designer, for example. If the, director, the marketing director of L'Oréal is an engineer, for example, that, that doesn't cause any, any problem to anyone. But I mean, to think about it could be a designer. It's, it's a real problem and uh, no projection. And probably we don't prepare the students enough to occupy those position. And it's a real problem. And, uh, and nobody wants to talk about that. We are talking about the product, the services, the experience, and uh, but the career of, of the designer is fundamental if we want uh, designed to be recognized. That's and fantastic. Re and, and uh, you know, I'm in France, for example, it's totally amazing that, I mean, among the members of parliament, for example, no designers, you have some, doc you have some doctor in medicine, you have some vets, you have some engineers, you have politicians, you have many, many professions represented, no designer at all. It's totally incredible. And nobody, nobody thinks it could be possible, even the designer. So the thing is, uh, we need to educate the designer to become, to occupy all the position because they are designer. So you've just been graduated, you are 23 years old, and you are enrolled in Decathlon, for example, to uh, draw some uh, bicycles. You are not going to draw some bicycle during all your life because, you, because at 35 years old, you'll be dead, definitely. This is, this, no, it's clear. So you need to occupy all the functions because you are a designer. And it's very difficult to tell that to the students, very difficult to tell that to the professors, very difficult to tell that to rectors of uh, universities of design, because we have not historically experimented that. And we can't affirm on one side that design has become strategic if we don't educate our students to occupy those top strategic position. Definitely. That means we need to 
um, uh, teach them economy. We need to teach them business, of course. But uh, uh, the the function of management, you know, how to share, how to animate, how to motivate, uh, how to listen to the others, and how to be capable to put around the table the engineer, the marketer, the finances, philosophers, sociologists, and make them work together. And together, we are going to represent the world of tomorrow. And this is it. This is it. Who says that? I mean, it's clearly a matter of management. The problem, it's very difficult to, to, uh, to, to define what is, I mean, uh, um, uh, management in terms of design, you know, because uh, 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 design management has been defined as a, a sort of relationship with business. I'm not talking about that. I mean, business is one part. To manage, it's, it's to manage, it, put, or it, it is to put around the table all the competences and make them work on tomorrow. This is what I call management. And business is part, but it's not the only one. Technology is part, applied art is part, philosophy, sociology is part. In which world, in which world we want to live in tomorrow needs to have all those competences and make them work together. And the strategy, the, the, the work of the designer is to represent this world, is to make it real as it doesn't exist, real and acceptable. And acceptable, it's bankable, profitable. And, uh, and uh, acceptable, it's to give a sense. I, I, love, I love this, uh, I like the, the, the words of uh, uh, the former rector of uh, Kolding University, uh, Kolding School of Design in Denmark. She said, and uh, during the uh, past centuries, the, the question for uh, uh, companies was to uh, manage what was technologically possible, what was um, um, acceptable in terms of profit. The new companies, the, the companies of the 21st century, is the question is totally different, Sid, and uh, um, how we have to make sense. So we have passed from technology, business, and now the era is what makes sense. And the fact to represent the world of tomorrow is to give it sense. And it's a fun time, and, and we are living in a, in a wonderful context, wonderful playground for that, because um, we have big shifts in the context. Ecology, we need to make sense. We have to save the planet, definitely. And, 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 uh, and, and it's urgent. I am from a generation, the, the, the problematic have, have been uh, taught um, 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 I mean, 20, I mean, 40 years ago now, it was uh, to protect the planet. The, the, the problem uh, now is not to, to protect the planet. The, the, the problem is to save the planet. It's urgent, definitely. And a uh, second point, which is very important too, and uh, probably it, it will be more urgent to deal with this. Uh, um, and uh, it's the relationship uh, between human and robots, definitely. What does that mean to be human? What does that mean to be human? And uh, suppose that uh, you lose your two legs and suppose you have two bionic legs and the technology is, is there to, to do that. And if those two legs uh, permits you to run faster than Usain Bolt, are you still human? Are you still human? And this is the great problem we have to manage. And uh, so to save the planet and maybe to save a human being. And uh, I did a TEDx um, I mean, two years ago in Brussels about and the title of the TEDx, it was a little bit provocative. It, what does that mean to be human if the robots are more intelligent than we are? This, this is really a question. And I'm not kidding when I say intelligent because the robots tomorrow, they, they will have some emotion, definitely. They will be capable to respond to our emotion, definitely. And probably the only thing the robots couldn't, couldn't do 
it, it will be to conceive God. This is the only thing that will remain to human, to conceive something beyond us. This, this is the thing. I have a problem with that because I don't believe in God myself. But this is the thing. This is my conclusion. Probably it will be very difficult for robots and uh, artificial intelligence to conceive that there is uh, something that we can't explain uh, beyond us. And that uh, 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 determinant for morals and, uh, and, um, and, and to solve the, the question we can't solve um, rationally. But, and uh, so probably the robots won't be able to do that. But the question for all the other things, the problem is, what does that mean to be human? If the robots can do many, many things uh, that will, uh, and we will be prevented from uh, in the years to come. Let me tell you a story. We work for a company here called uh, Silke in France. And Silke uh, makes some avatar. You enter a cabin, you are shot, um, I don't remember how many uh, times, and, uh, and five minutes after, you have your articulated avatar on a keyboard, on a, on, on a key. The question is, what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that tomorrow? We will send our avatar in some virtual stores to buy our shirts, for example. So we will ask our avatar to go to a virtual platform and uh, to uh, try the shirt uh, you want to buy. And uh, so it will be easy. And, and, and by the same time, you will solve uh, uh, an old question of, uh, of human being, which is the, the uh, ubiquity. You, you, can be two, you can be in two different places or many places at the same time. So it's very uh, passionate. But the thing is, suppose that you uh, augment your avatar with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, your avatar knows uh, how many white shirts you have in your uh, dressing room. You send your avatar, uh, I want three white shirts. Your avatar will, I mean, it will think that probably you need one black, one blue, one white. And your avatar will come back with uh, three different colors because you have enough white shirt in your, in your cupboard. And that means what? That means that your avatar will take the lead on you. You'll be dominated by your avatar. And it's exactly the world in which we are going to live tomorrow. Definitely. We, we have some... Uh, um, counter in France called a Linky to uh, manage the electricity in home, in homes. Many information on that, many information with it, in it, and especially the information of um, uh, at what time you uh, woke up, uh, at what time uh, uh, you um, you decided to uh, to go to the toilets during the night, and uh, and so and at seven o'clock in the morning, you you will have a letter from uh, I don't know uh, a prosthetic doctor. I mean, I mean to tell you that uh, maybe you have a problem. So I mean, no, definitely this it's true. We are going to live with that. What we want to do with that. We have to manage it, of course. And the question, the big question behind that is, what does that mean to be human? If you are managed by the data, if you are managed by uh, uh, facial recognition, if you are managed by uh, your avatar and so on. And it's, it's really an urgent question. And it won't be dealt in the School of Engineers, definitely. It won't be dealt in, the, dealt in the School of Business, it will be dealt in the School of Design. With engineers and with marketers, definitely. That it will be dealt in the School of Design. This is amazing what you just said. But can, can AI do empathy? 
What do you mean? I mean, precise the question if you want me to answer to have an empathy. intelligent. You, you talked about emotional intelligence, but we, yeah. I think there is a challenge about empathy, about feeling. Oh, you mean in the relationship with the robots, for example? Can AI do empathy? Can AI be, be feeling sort of I mean, compassion, we, will, we, will, we will teach the robots to have some emotion. I don't know how. I mean, I don't know how. But, I mean, let me, let me give you an example. My mother and the dog of my mother. She is totally persuaded that her dog loves her. That's totally ridiculous. It's only a projection. Because, I mean, when my mother tells her dog, do you love me? The dog, I mean, I, I never heard the dog, I mean, saying yes. Definitely. The, the, dog would protect, is, the dog would protect your mother above every, everything else. I mean, she has been, she, uh, I, mean, I mean, the dog has been educated for that. So, I mean, to protect my mother or, uh, or, uh, or to bark uh, at certain times and so on. But the fact that my mother is totally persuaded that her dog loves her, it will be exactly the same with the robots. So I may be tomorrow totally persuaded that the robot loves me. Why not? Why not? Love is a projection. Love is a projection, for example. So we are going to learn the robots to, to respond to our emotion. And uh, you will feel that it's the, all, the, their own emotion and, uh, and probably, and, and probably and, uh, they will be able to generate uh, emotion on emotion. And, uh, and they, will, they, they, they will create some, some new emotions. I'm I'm totally convinced of that. You remember you remember the the uh, the, the toys for the children. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, Tamagotchi. Mm -hmm. It was totally ridiculous. It was totally ridiculous. But the children they were totally persuaded that the Tamagotchi had emotions because Tamagotchi responded to uh, I mean needs and uh, I want to eat I want to drink I don't remember exactly and and they were an empathy between the Tamagotchi and, and the children definitely it was totally insane totally ridiculous but it was true it was true and this is exactly the thing so what do you think will happen uh, to the world of uh, work and apprenticeships and education. What do you have the word of word work and and also tell us about the disruption that you have faced on that in the past couple of years. Education. If you are talking about education in design, uh, I, I do feel it has change of nature, um, and especially in France, uh, we are um, sat on the tradition of applied arts and uh, of creation. Applied art and creation. So we had some. Uh, uh, I mean, 20 years ago, we had some master in product design, in uh, entire architecture, in uh, graphism, and so on. Now in France and in our school, especially, and I, I can say that we have been the first to do that. And no, it's uh, uh, it has it's, it, it has been spread. But um, we have some masters in food design. For example, gathering some product designer, entire architect, um, gathering graphists, and so on, to uh, manage some big problematics the world uh, will face in the in the in the years to come. So, a master of food design. I mean, the generic question is uh, how we are going to feed um, eight billion inhabitants on Earth in the years to come. How we are going to pass from insect to um, to 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 meet from in, uh, 
from meat to insect, I'm sorry, how we are going to pass from meat to insect, for example. And uh, it's the matter of distribution, it's um, uh, channel of distribution, the involvement of uh, the matter of logistics uh, will totally change the relationship we have with the stores, for example, but it can be uh, uh, how to manage frugality, how to manage the uh, circular economy within packaging, for example. So this is food design. So this is not product design. This is not entire architecture. This is not graphism. It's a wall gathering all those techniques because it's a wall. So we have passed from um, segmented design to a global design to manage the big problematics. Mm -hmm. So we have a lab uh, of food design. We have a lab in digital design to manage the relationship of uh, um, between um, human and machine. And uh, we have a lab about care. Care is uh, health, emergency, aging, innovation in, um, um, industry, um, in, in policies, in global policies, institutional policies. And uh, so this is care. And we have another lab called uh, City. And to manage, finally, how we are going to live together uh, in big metropoles, the relationship with the countryside, the relationship, the, uh, um, the, I mean, the autonomy of the cities and uh, how we are going to manage security in the big cities and so on. So we have passed from applied art and those uh, old thematics, products, entire architecture, graphism to global design, global design. We stay it's technique design has, uh, is still a technique. So we have bachelors sat on um, applied art. We have a bachelor in product. We have bachelor in graphism. But the masters, it's much more global because we consider it's a, it's, it's a matter of management of global problematics. That's fantastic. I, I'm, I was referring also on a more immediate note. Like, sort of, for example, uh, a lot of a lot of the current students and graduates will have, or current students will have to uh, have apprenticeships remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you find that who's working? And how do you find we can prepare today's students and graduates for work? I'm I'm talking about the next couple, two or three years on the line. Make, make them work with company during the world program, you know. And yeah. uh, in, in not, I mean, for a five-year program, so three years in bachelor and two years in, uh, in master, we have uh, um, mostly um, 80, 80 partnership. Uh, so that means that normal students uh, will have uh, to deal with 80 companies during the curriculum. And uh, so um, it's 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 um, eighty partnership, and the relationship with the companies is very uh, difficult to manage. And uh, because in terms of innovation, of course, the companies they they don't know exactly what they want, and it's totally normal. It's innovation, so they come they they come with one problematic, but after fifteen days they change a problematic because. Uh, they are not sure, and uh, so it's very difficult to manage for the, the 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 curriculum, for the students, for the professors to adapt, to always adapt. But this is this is the the, the work of a designer to adapt. And uh, and in terms of innovation, of course, uh, you experiment some uh, uh, ways, and you go back, and you go uh, on other ways, and so on. So uh, that's it. But uh, to answer your question. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a student me, uh, meet um, meets sorry uh, eighty uh, eighty companies, so it's good projection uh, uh, and uh, for professionalization. So uh, really, and and really, it works very well. We have some uh, very good rate of employment, more uh, uh, than eighty percent, uh, uh, so in France and uh, and abroad, and it works very well. So that that's very um, very good, very good. That's Works fantastic. Well. Tell us a story of how you got involved in education. Uh, I was, I mean, I was working in New York City 
and um, on the uh, on the market and um, and uh, on the stock market. And I've been fired in uh, 1987 because of the crack and was in the US. So I was uh, uh, obliged to go back France. And uh, unfortunately in France, uh, there were a crack too, because when there is a crack somewhere, there is a crack in France. And uh, so I decided to become a professor. So I uh, began to teach at the university in Paris, uh, finance, uh, I worked there. And then I've been asked to uh, uh, manage a school of business. And uh, then I've been asked to uh, manage a school of, uh, uh, of design. And really, um, I'm totally passionate uh, by what I'm, 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 I'm working because uh, as I told you, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I, I thank uh, the, 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 the person who has uh, enrolled me because every morning, every morning I meet a student who is more intelligent than I am. Because, I mean, he or she has an idea that really, I was, I, I was not supposing five minutes before that uh, it could happen or it, 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 it could be a, a good idea for tomorrow. And I'm totally amazed by the talent of the students, you know. And uh, so that's very great. It's to, um, to learn every morning, to learn all the time and to project and with patience because we have a responsibility uh, to, 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 uh, to be at the world of tomorrow. This, this is really uh, fantastic. This is really fantastic. And uh, so, and I pray for, uh, um, uh, for that to last a long time. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. So how did you find the shift from going from business to design? I was when I've been when I've been enrolled twenty years ago. We had, I mean, in the school, and um, there, there were uh, no partnerships, no partnership with companies, because there were a sort of dictate that um, to have some relationship with company, it was the, uh, uh, the 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 best way to shorten the creation of the students. That was the dictate. And uh, so uh, it will, it will, yeah, it will shorten the talent of the students if you input them to work with companies. And I mean, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous because the products, I mean, they need to be sell. Mm -hmm. They need to be sold. Definitely, mm -hmm. they need to be sold. So we are going to work with companies. We are going to work with companies. But my purpose, because of course I had all the professors in my office and uh, uh, screaming at me and so on. And uh, I, was, uh, I was a devil, you know, so, okay, all right. But I told them, come on, come on, come on, come on. My responsibility is not to educate creative people. My responsibility is to find the students, to, to make the students find a job. It's totally different. And if they are creative, they will find a job, definitely. But to be creative, it's a mean, it's a tool. But the objective of the school from now on is to find a job. And so it was obvious at the time, and it was impossible to, to, to beat this idea. I mean, the professor, they were not used about that. So it, and, and it was impossible to argue about that. Uh, the objective may be totally different on that. And uh, considering the, 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 the rate of unemployment in France, you know, it was totally impossible to, to argue in another way. So I said, from now on, we are focused on professionalization. And professionalization is to multiplicate, multiply the, the relationship with companies. Definitely. And it was okay. All right. Finally. That's brilliant. If, if there were no limitations, if you had no limitations at all, would you do anything differently in, in, in design education? 
there is there is a challenge about um, internationalization, uh -huh. and uh, really, I I do feel uh, um, I do feel that I mean the normal. Uh, curriculum for a student um, should be uh, three years in your own, the, the technical years, the bachelors, uh, you can be educated in your own country. But the, ma the, the masters, you have to go abroad. You have to go abroad. You have to discover the world. You have to discover the world. And this is the reason why historically we have created Shanghai and we have created uh, Pune. We have a branch in Pune in India, in San Paolo and in, in Montreal and, and now in, um, in Africa. And probably we will open all the branches in the, in the years to come. And uh, in some countries that we don't know in France, Malaysia and uh, Indonesia and so on. And Jakarta is supposed to be the, 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 the most uh, large down in the world in uh, the years to come. Who knows that in Europe? Nobody knows that in Europe. So, and uh, so, and um, the internationalization is fundamental. And uh, I'd like my students to be uh, convinced that they have to go abroad. And I'd like to um, convince them that they have to defend their own identity. And uh, so I, I always said to my Chinese students, uh, when they come in France, I tell them, you are involved in a global world, but please never become a global designer. Become a Chinese student or a Chinese designer in a global world. It's totally different. Never forget where you do come from. And because uh, before to 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 before to become someone, uh, you come from somewhere. So you have to defend your own identity. What does that mean to be a French designer? What does that mean to be an Italian designer, Brazilian designer, and uh, in a global world? So this is the thing, and. Uh, you, the question and uh, uh, with no limits and uh, I mean I'd like the students to understand that I'd like the students to understand that they will be the manager the top manager of tomorrow and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, make them understand that they have a responsibility uh, in terms of uh, creation of course but in terms of identity definitely because if we want a world a diverse uh, we need to defend our own identity of course without excluding the the others but uh, 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 and uh, on the contrary uh, and uh, i mean in in always searching from uh, always searching um, the the way to enrich your own culture mm -hmm. with the others but we need that and probably and uh, we have a lot to do in um, relating to uh, entrepreneurship you know uh, when a students do a uh, bicycle uh, as a final project in uh, in our schools i mean they don't do a bicycle they drew a uh, uh, drawings of bicycle uh, maquettes of bicycle and uh, and imagine on, on the screen of a, a computer. And uh, so this is not a bicycle. This is not a bicycle. This is a piece of paper or a screen or whatever. And we need to educate our students to understand that they have to uh, become entrepreneur of their own ideas. So it's, of course, to create some startups if they can, or but but uh, or uh, dealing with some companies to to make their product real to make the services real and, and so on and we have a lot to do we have to uh, a lot to do for that because the the consciousness of the designer is uh, much more to protect is or her ideas than to develop is or her ideas with others and we have a lot to do in that we have an experience in in montreal 
Montreal, we have created a branch and we send some French students in Montreal each year. And, um, and we work with, um, um, center, with a center of incubation. Uh, the center of incubation called Syntec, it's the center of incubation of uh, a school of engineer there. So technology. And they have decided to uh, welcome our students. It's a master program. And uh, the, the, the students um, interact with the startups. So it's very short companies, three persons, four persons. So the students are... Uh, um, immediately uh, at top strategic position because there are only two or three or four people and it works very well and it, it makes our students totally conscious that they can undertake, they can become entrepreneur of the, their, uh, their own ideas and it works very well. I don't know if I'm clear. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, <laughs> okay. of, course of course, of course. Fantastic, fantastic. So how can our viewers and listeners get in touch with you? Uh, I mean, you, you have my mail, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on the uh, social network, so no problem. And uh, uh, I like the debate and, uh, and um, so no problem. And uh, my phone can be found on the, on the social network, so with no problems and uh, okay. And uh, the school has, uh, of course, a website, so no problem. I'm very open, you know. Brilliant, brilliant. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Uh, be creative. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm quite, I mean, the, the, it's not an advice, it's, it's a feeling, you know, and um, I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic about the world uh, together we are going to build uh, for tomorrow. I mean, uh, there is no way for pessimism and uh, I'm sure that, uh, I mean, the designer will be uh, clever enough to, uh, uh, to, to, to draw a brilliant world for tomorrow. So that's it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Uh, for looking very much forward to your keynote at the Design Education Forum this uh, November. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. we'll be in touch. Thank you so much, Christian. Thank you. Thank you so bye much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.